All right, welcome to the Portal Report Head Coach Showcase. I'm Riley Frain, a scout and recruiter with TPR, and today we're joined by another very special guest and head coach Chris Gerlifson from San Francisco's men's basketball program. Thank you so much for coming on and giving us a bit of your time today, Coach. Thanks for having me, Riley. Of course. So firstly, just kind of checking in, you know, how's everything going for you and your staff at San Francisco? Have you guys really had a chance to breathe following the end of last season? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> things are going great. Um you know, it's been a uh, a whirlwind of an off season with the portal and and uh, recruiting actually just finished up for us about a week and a half ago. So, um, not a whole lot of downtime, but I'm really excited about where we're at as a program and kind of what we've had a chance to do with our roster, uh, along with our returning guys. So, um, we're excited to jump right into summer school. We just started last week, so uh, it's full bore ahead for us. So before we get started talking about, you know, your offseason and some of those exciting new additions, you know, on the roster you've already hinted at, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on the success of last year. Obviously, you know, your first year in charge of the program, but you guys finished 20 and 14, you know, with some marquee wins, uh, produced a pair of all conference first team selections uh, and then made it all the way to the semifinals of the you know West Coast Conference tournament in a really competitive league. So I wanted to know if you could, you know, kind of talk to me about some of the things you think that went right in your first year as a head coach, really, of any program, uh, and, you know, as well as some of the things you'll look to build on heading into year number two here. Yeah, I thought, you know, for for me and our staff, you know, we had a lot of positives happen for us in the first year. Um, did it go completely how we wanted it to go? No, but I think probably everybody in the country would say that, you know, we had a lot of highs and we had some lows as well. Uh, but I thought we learned a lot about our group and um, probably what I'm most excited and, and most happy with in terms of our team from last year is I thought we were playing our best basketball at the end of the year. Um, and that's a credit to the guys who are in the locker room and our staff. So, um, you know, I, I was happy. I'm, I'm by no means satisfied. Um, I think we have a lot more on our plate in terms of what we think we can do as a program. And, and that's why it's exciting heading into uh, year number two. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, heading into year number two, obviously that last year was a fairly senior heavy roster. And so you've had to deal, you know, with a lot of turnover this offseason. Uh, and so with that second year in charge looming, you know, you guys really hit the transfer portal hard. And so I kind of want to get right into discussing some of those new portal recruits. And um, why sure. don't we start with, you know, the two early signees, obviously uh, USC transfer Malik Thomas coming over as well as Missouri State freshman uh, Jonathan Mogbo. So I wanted to know what were the staff's reactions like to their announcements and what personally excites you, coach, about, you know, each of their additions? Yeah, I mean, we we tried to as a staff, you know, really dive into our roster last year and, and see kind of what our deficiencies were. Right. And um, address some of those deficiencies with the transfer portal and, and with our high school recruiting. And I think we've been able to do that. Um, that's why I'm so excited about our group. Um, but when you talk about Jonathan, you know, Magbo, uh, I think he's a guy who uh, he was a junior college guy, went to Missouri State uh, and was really productive for them. But I think he's still kind of just scratching the surface of what he can be as a player. I think he's going to add tremendous value for us from day one on the defensive end. Um, but I've been so pleasantly surprised with um, kind of his poise and his IQ from an offensive standpoint since we've got our hands on him. And so I think he's going to see a really big progression with his game over the next, um, you know, we have him for two years. So I'm, I'm really excited. He's a different kind of player than what we've had. He's a run and jump, quick twitch athlete uh, with some pretty good feel. So I'm excited about him. And then Malik Thomas, uh, he's a kid who, you know, entered uh, college with a really high rep. You know, he was Gatorade player of the year in the state of California, uh, scored over 2000 points in high school and just for whatever reason could never really crack the, the rotation at USC. Um, and I think he's coming in with a really big chip on his shoulder and, you know, wants to get back to the player that we all know he is. Uh, he's a guy who can really score the ball. And I think he will be, um, we're going to try to replace the Shabazz and, and a Ty Roberts, you know, uh, collectively, no singular guy can do that, but I think he will help uh, replacing some of the production that we lost. Uh, and then, so on top of that, you know, moving right down the line, you and the staff at San Francisco added really a pair of stellar international transfer portal recruits, obviously, you know, with Stefan Todorovic and Mike Sharam drafts joining from uh, SMU and Dayton respectively. 
And I think in particular, these two guys are, you know, really compelling additions on your roster as two younger guys that I think represent a lot of potential. But even even further than that, both have spoken extensively about their excitement and really just joining the San Francisco and the Bay Area community. So I want to ask, you know, for you and the staff coach, just how pivotal were those two additions? Uh, and even further than that, when specifically with someone like Mike, somebody who was going through, you know, the NBA draft process and potentially looking at a pro career, what was the recruitment process really like with him and building a relationship there? Yeah, uh, I'll start with Steph first. You know, Steph is a guy who, you know, originally signed with a different staff at SMU and it had a coaching change. And, um, you know, he he did not probably play to his potential this past year. And he decided he wanted to test the waters of the transfer portal. And um, he had actually gone to prep school here in, in Napa at Prolific Prep. So there was some comfortability with him in the Bay Area. Um, and he's a guy who we lost. 180 plus threes between Ty Roberts and, and Khalil Shabazz. And he's a guy who, you know, when he went into the portal automatically, you know, kind of set our, our radar off, you know, one of my assistants, Jay Duncan had the chance to coach him at SMU. Um, and so we had a really strong connection with him. He did a great job of, of getting him here. Um, but he's a guy with positional size and can really shoot the ball. Uh, and I think he will be very good in terms of how we play from an offensive standpoint. So I'm really excited about him. And he has two years of play um, with Mike. You know, Mike was an interesting recruit because he went all the way till the draft deadline before he pulled his name out, decided to come back to school. And initially, we didn't think he was going to come back to college. And, and so we just kind of stayed the course. And um, the Bay Area, again, he's a guy who. Um, you know, for for an Asian player, there's a lot of Mongolian influence here in the Bay Area. And I think we're going to have a chance to tap into that from a fan standpoint. I think he'll feel very comfortable here. Uh, but he's a guy, again, 6'8", uh, with point guard skills uh, that I think will fit really well into our offense. And um, I'm really happy that we were able to increase kind of our overall positional size. I think that will lend um itself to how we play on both sides of the ball we'll have a little bit more versatility uh from a defensive standpoint which I'm excited about uh and and again I think you know Gonzaga is big St. Mary's is big you know we need to be able to match up with those those type teams mm -hmm. uh, so even uh, one of the things we've heard coaches kind of talk about frequently on the show is is really the challenges of building a locker room culture you know with so much roster turnover from year to year and you know you talk about Khalil Shabazz there for a minute and I want to obviously he being a four-year guy at San Francisco I imagine he was such a big leader there uh, and so you know with so much roster turnover several seniors graduating and now you're bringing in four you know fresh new faces what are some of the challenges that you feel you'll have to navigate to really you know instill the culture you're looking to bring to this team yeah I, I mean the interesting part of that question is is not only San Francisco is dealing with that right that is, that is collective across college basketball so everything that we're dealing with everyone else is as well um I think we do a fairly good job at developing relationships with our players um that's super important to me and our staff we spend a lot of time individually with our guys but collectively as well and in the summer is the best time to kind of bridge those gaps and, and for guys to get to know each other, kind of get outside of their comfort zone, um, whether it's doing stuff as a team completely away from basketball or um, just spending time in the gym together. And, and um, you know, that's part of recruiting, too. We want to kind of attract and recruit guys that, um, number one, are high character guys and guys that are going to want to mesh and ingrain themselves in, in trying to do something bigger than themselves. All right, Coach, first off, you know, thank you so much again for joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, but before we end here, I want to kind of give you the floor with one last question. So we've touched on, you know, some of the success of last season, the extensive recruiting your staff has done this offseason, and, and some of the challenges uh, of building that culture from year to year throughout college basketball. Uh, but all in all, I think there's been a lot of buzz around this, you know, San Francisco program's reemergence over the past couple seasons, and now with you leading the charges especially. So I, I just want to ask, you know, what's your message to the USF fans with the summer well underway and, you know, the 2023-24 season just a couple months ahead? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be here before we know it, number one. And, and um, I would just say that, you know, I could not be more excited. Our staff could not be more excited about – um, you know, what we're going to have the chance to do here, you know, as a program over the next, you know, 12 months. And 
Um, I think we have a group assembled that's hungry. Um, we've kind of tasted some success here over the last few years. And, and I think that's kind of urged our group to want more. And, um, you know, I, I'm just excited to kind of roll our sleeves up and get to work. And I think it's going to be a really fun season here on the Hilltop uh, with some really exciting players for, for our fans to kind of get behind and, and support. So I appreciate you having me on. Uh, hopefully I can jump on again with you sometime here soon. Of course. Thank you very much, Coach Chris Gerlifson from San Francisco. Thank you Thanks, very much brother. for joining us, Coach. Thanks, man.